Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. I hope you're all doing so well. Welcome back to another true crime and makeup video. Today we have Nanny Doss. Now to look at Nanny Doss, you would see a sweet, smiley, happy, kind looking woman. Um, unfortunately, she wasn't. If you looked a bit deeper and you know looked into her soul, what you would see would be pure evil with a trail of death left behind her. Nanny Doss was evil. She believed that she could just go through multiple husbands until she found the perfect partner. Nanny would frequently write into the Lonely Hearts column, which was a column in a magazine. It was so you could find like romantic partners. And she would write into there or respond to other ads from men. And she would select whichever man she wanted. And somehow she wound up marrying five men and she killed every single one of them. Yeah. Now, Nanny Doss didn't just kill her husband, she would also go on to kill her family. She would kill her daughters, her granddaughters, her grandsons. She was insane. Before we get into the case of Nanny Doss, please make sure you have subscribed to my channel. Also put the notification bell on so you don't miss when I upload, which is every Wednesday and Sunday. Any other details that you want, social media handles, email address, etc. is all linked down below along with the products used on my face today. But without any further rambling and any further ado, let's get into the case of Nanny Doss. So Nanny Doss, she was originally born Nancy Hazel on the 4th of November 1905 and she was born in Blue Mountain, Alabama. So her mum was Louisa Nee Holder, although many people would refer to her as Lou. So if I refer to her again, it's probably going to be Lou. And her dad was James F. Hazel. Now, Nanny was one of five children. She had a brother and three sisters. And from what I could see, they were relatively close growing up, but they did wind up drifting apart as they got older. Just to clarify, not naked. I do have a top on, but I'm very much giving naked vibes, but I'm not. So Nanny and her mum Lou, they both absolutely despised her father James. Now James was known to be a very controlling and abusive man and instead of letting the children go to school he would force them to work on the family farm and this resulted in all the children having a really poor academic performance. In particular Nanny seemed to have it the worst. She wasn't very clued up, she didn't really have a lot of academic skill and honestly the children just really despised James for this because they they actually wanted to go to school which is like unheard of. Like who actually wants to go to school? I know I didn't. These children really did. I think they just felt like they were so different compared to all of the other children. I guess when you're a child, when your parents refuse to let you do something, you kind of want to do it more, so they want to go to school. Now, when Nanny was just seven years old, her and her family were riding on a train. They were going to go visit relatives in southern Alabama, and whilst they were on this train ride, the train came to like a really sudden halt, like proper jolted everyone. This resulted in Nanny smacking her head off of the metal bar right in front of her and this incident would cause severe headaches and migraines for Nanny further down the line as well as like random blackouts and severe depression and they do say later that this incident, the hit in her head on the metal bar, was actually what caused her mental instability. Now, many serial killers, okay, many serial killers have previously suffered a head injury or a brain injury. Let's look at John Wayne Gacy, for instance. He had a brain injury or a head injury when he was young and they thought this might have reflected his serial killing. Now, by the time Nanny was a teenager, she was fantasising about the perfect future and for her, this included a perfect husband who would love her as much as she loved him. And she would indulge in romance magazines and romance columns within these magazines, particularly the Lonely Hearts column. 
That was a hard hitter for Nanny. She really enjoyed that one. Now, Nanny, she would spend the majority of her time reading these columns in the magazines. And it is thought that she'd done this to almost escape her reality of her abusive father, because it is noted that her mother would turn a blind eye to the abuse. Now, looking for that perfect future with the perfect husband, Nanny would spend a lot of time searching for Mr. Right. Now, Nanny thought, how am I going to know if these Mr. Rights are Mr. Rights or if they're in fact Mr. Wrongs? Um, maybe I should just marry them and work it out from there. Do you know how like usually people will get to know someone and then they'll be like, do you know what? This is the one. This is Mr. Right. I want to marry this guy. Nanny thought it would be better to meet, marry and then discover. So this is what she would do. So at the young age of 16, Nanny Doss meets her first husband. They knew each other for four months before getting married. And like, listen, I would love to say, oh, when you know, you know, like what a love story, you know, when you know someone's right, you just know. Uh, apparently Nanny didn't know because this marriage fell apart. Now, husband number one was a man called Charlie Braggs. Now, Charlie and Nanny, they would go on to have four children between 1921 and 1927. And this is where the marriage really started to crumble because having children doesn't fix marital problems, believe it or not. Um, yeah, it doesn't. But they thought, you know, let's have children, see if we can give this whole family thing a go. And it just all fell apart. Now, Nanny, at this point, she was living with Charlie's mother, so her mother-in-law. And Charlie's mother would exhibit a lot of the behaviours that Nanny's father had, the behaviours that she was trying to escape. Now, this was really, really triggering for Nanny. And people do believe that this whole interaction and living with Charlie's mother might have actually triggered her murderous intentions. So in the year 1927, both Charlie and Nanny, they would lose both of their middle daughters and the suspected cause of death at the time was food poisoning. Okay. And it was very soon after the death of their daughters that the couple would split up. Don't know if it was just you know, grief that happens in families when they lose a child, they can end up sort of parting ways. Or was it the fact that Charlie thought Nanny might be at fault? Now, Charlie Braggs, he would wind up taking their older daughter, Melvina, and took her to live with him. And then their younger daughter, Florine, she would be left with Nanny and also his mother. Now, just a year after her divorce from Charlie, Nanny would go on to marry her second husband, Frank Harrelson. Now, Frank Harrelson, he was quite the catch. He wasn't really. Um, he was an abusive alcoholic who very much displayed the behaviours of Nanny's father when she was a child. Now, Frank was from Jacksonville and him and Nanny, they met through the Lonely Hearts column. Love that for Nanny. It's like her just a true fairy tale for her. Um, so Frank would write into the Lonely Hearts column with these really romantic letters and poems, and Nanny would reply with racy letters and also kind of semi-naked pictures. She's sending nudes via the paper. Now, as I was saying, Frank is extremely abusive and he is also sporting a very extensive criminal record. But despite all this, love conquers all and Nanny and Frank, they remain married for 16 years, up until the year of 1945. Now, Nanny's oldest daughter, Melvina, she would go on to give birth to a baby boy by the name of Robert Lee Haynes. And this was in 1943. And then just two years later, she would give birth to another baby. But devastatingly, this baby would pass away very quickly after it was born. Now, the day the baby passed away, Melvina was obviously exhausted from labour and she was really groggy from ether, which is like a really strong solvent that I think they used to use back in the day when people were given birth. Now, here's the weird thing. Melvina, obviously she's exhausted, she's groggy, she doesn't really know entirely what's going on, but she believed on the day that Nanny came to visit her and the newborn baby, 
She believed that she witnessed Nanny stick a hat pin into the baby's head. What? So she says to her husband and her sister, like, listen, I think mum has just stuck a hat pin into my baby's head, which could be the cause of death. Now, her husband and sister, they couldn't confirm that Nanny had done this, but what they could confirm is when they had spoken to Nanny, she was holding a hat pin. Now, it was mentioned to doctors what Melvina believed that she might have seen, but the doctors could not positively confirm the cause of death for the baby. And I suppose if it's a hat pin, that's going to be like a tiny, tiny little like pinprick. So it might have been so hard to detect. Now, the grief for Melvina and her husband was just too much. They couldn't recover from that. So they did wind up separating. They went their separate ways and Melvina started to date a soldier that she had met. Now, Nanny, she didn't approve of this relationship. She didn't like the soldier. She didn't approve. She did not want Melvina to be with this man. Also, not sure how well it's shown up on camera, but I did actually just blend the fallout from my green eyeshadow with my concealer on my under eyes. So now I have green under eyes. We're going to have to bear with this for like five, ten minutes. Now, a few months after the death of Nanny's granddaughter, her grandson Robert would also die. Now, Melvina and Nanny, they had a big fight. And because of this big fight, Melvina decided that she wanted to go and visit her dad just to have some time to clear her head, cool down, take a break, have a Kit Kat and then reconvene with Nanny when she felt ready. Now, this baby died when it was left in the care of Nanny. Yep, Melvina had left baby Robert with Nanny while she went to visit her dad and when she came back, her son was dead. So it was July the 7th, 1945, when young Robert would pass away under the care of Nanny. Now, at first, his death was unknown. They didn't know what had caused his death. But doctors later revealed that his cause of death was asphyxia by an unknown cause. Unknown cause. Nanny, her hands. Now, just two months after the death of little Robert... Nanny would collect a $500 life insurance policy that she had taken out on Robert. Listen, I'm not a grandmother, right? I don't claim to be one, but why on earth would a grandmother have an insurance policy out on their grandson? And it's not making sense. Make it make sense. It doesn't. Weird. Now, it was also reported in 1945, Nanny would be raped by Frank Harrelson, you know, the, the abusive husband that she was with, which is obviously devastating and disgusting. And apparently this took place after they had had a drunken night together at the end of World War II. And Nanny, of course, was heartbroken, infuriated, disgusted by the actions of Frank Harrelson. So she decided that she was going to mix up a secret ingredient and put this in Frank's hidden jar of moonshine. Moonshine is basically homemade alcohol. If you've ever heard the saying, moonshine can make you go blind. Um, pretty dangerous. It's, it's strong stuff. Now, after Nanny had mixed up her little concoction and put this into his moonshine, he was dead a week later. By September the 14th, 1945, Frank Harrelson was no more. Now, the people of the town, they believed that Frank Harrelson had passed away from food poisoning because that's the only explanation, right? I mean, here was Nanny, absolutely heartbroken and devastated over her husband's death. And she was so devastated that she very quickly claimed his life insurance policy, bought a plot of land and bought a house near Jacksonville because she was so devastated. Like, come on. It wasn't her. Now, Nanny Doss later went on to meet Arlie Lanning from Lexington, North Carolina. And they had met after Lanning had responded to an ad that Nanny Doss had placed in the Lonely Hearts column. Now, very similarly to Frank Harrelson, Lanning was an alcoholic and also a womanizer. Yep, a womanizer. And despite Lanning having these, you know, unsavoury characteristics, 
it would actually wind up being Nanny that would be the one who would disappear occasionally for months on end. Now, when Nanny was actually at home, she did do a very good job of playing the doting wife, apparently. But, like, do doting wives put rat poison in their husband's meals and drinks? Ask him for a friend. Now, due to Lanning being a very heavy drinker, the doctors had put his heart attack, yep, his heart attack due to his heavy drinking. Now, soon after the death of Lanning, the couple's house who had been left to his sister burned down. And who was entitled to the insurance money? Nanny Doss. Now, of course, the minute that house burned down, Nanny was right into the insurance office getting her claim and she got a little hefty profit on this. And soon after, Lanning's mother had passed away, so Nanny decided... I don't need to stay here anymore. I'm going to leave North Carolina. And after leaving North Carolina, she would wind up at her sister Dovey's house. Now, Dovey, sadly, she was bedridden. Her health was in really poor form. And she would pass away shortly after Nanny arrived. Weird that. Now, time goes on and Nanny is very much feeling like she's single and ready to mingle and she is looking for a new husband. Now, she joins this sort of like dating service called the Diamond Circle Club and through this, she meets Richard L. Morton. In 1952, Nanny and Richard, they would wind up getting married in Emporia, Kansas. Now, if we look at the traits of Richard, he was not an alcoholic. Tick. He was not abusive. Tick. He was, however, adulterous. Yes. He liked to play away from home. Now, Nanny had planned that she was going to kill Richard. That wasn't even a question. You know, he wasn't the one. She needed to get rid and... Ugh, Who's got to get divorced, right? It's always better to just kill. However, before poisoning Richard, she thought it might be better to get rid of her own mother first, Louisa. Lou. Louisa had come to stay with the couple in 1953 because she had broken her hip and obviously was needing a bit of care and a bit of assistance. Now listen, Nanny Doss, she was working her way up that family tree. She was just, who's next? She was just making sure she was taking out everybody on every single branch because shortly after the death of her mother, one of her sisters would pass away shortly after being in contact with Nanny. Yes. Now, after Nanny had dealt with her mother and her sister, she turned her attention and focus to her cheating husband, Richard. Now, Richard would be dead by May the 19th, 1953, and his death was ruled as mysterious circumstances. So at least we're not getting like a natural cause or an unknown death. It was mysterious. And isn't it so admirable that even after everything that Nanny's been through and the many husbands lost, she still hasn't given up on love. She would go on to marry her fifth and final husband, Samuel Doss from Oklahoma. Well, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Which just makes me think of friends like Chandler and Monica, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. Now, Samuel Doss, he was not an alcoholic and he was not abusive. He was a relatively good man. The only fatal mistake that Samuel would make with Nanny Doss was he told her that she should really give up all these like Lonely Hearts magazines and romance magazines and television and she should only read and watch things that are educational and beneficial. Which like, don't control what somebody can watch but at the same time I do think she needed to step away from the romance. Like if Nanny could just step away from the Lonely Hearts magazine, we might be in a better place. So Nanny had went on to cook Samuel a prune cake, one of his favourites, which sounds really nice and really thoughtful. That is until you hear that it was laced with poison. Now, Samuel, after this poisoning, he was admitted to hospital where he would stay for a month. And after he got released back home, he would pass away three days later. Nanny got him with a poisoned cup of coffee. Now, the doctor that had been treating Nanny's fifth husband through his hospital stay when he was in the hospital for a month, that whole time, he thought this was all down to foul play. He suspected it right away, 
but unfortunately he had no way of proving this. However, after the death of Samuel, the doctor did convince Nanny that she should allow him to perform an autopsy and he said the sole reason for this was if someone else suffered the same in the future, he would be able to save their life. She would be doing God's work by allowing this. Now, after the death of Samuel Doss, Nanny was set to receive two life insurance policies, so the doctor had to act quick. Now, during this autopsy, the doctor shockingly was able to locate huge traces of arsenic in Samuel's body. Now, he alerted the police immediately and Nanny Doss would be arrested in 1954. Now, very soon after her arrest, Nanny would quickly admit to killing four out of five of her husbands, but she would not admit to killing any family members. Now, the police, they decided that they were going to exhume a number of suspected victims of Nanny, and when they examined their bodies, they found huge traces of arsenic and rat poison. Yep. Now, the police believed that Nanny Doss would have up to 12 suspects and most of these suspects were likely to be her own blood relatives. What? Now, for these crimes, Nanny did state that this was purely down to her brain injury. Her brain injury caused her mental instability, which then caused her to kill. She's not saying it was Patricia, but like, come on. Now, journalists, they later went on to nickname Nanny as the Giggling Granny because whenever she was being interviewed by police, she could not contain her laughter. Like when she was describing how she murdered her husbands, she would break into like hysterics of giggles and creepy laughs. Now, Nanny would go on to say that the murders that she committed didn't actually have anything to do with claiming insurance money. This was purely because she was on the hunt for the perfect mate, the perfect partner, the doting husband. She wanted that real life romance that she read about. Before Nanny, she just found it a lot easier. Like if a marriage wasn't working out, why go through the hassle of a divorce when like I could just kill them? So much easier. And by doing that, she could just move on to the next one. She did say if a husband became too much for her, she would just decide like, right, you've got to go. Like you're not for me. And then she'd just look out for the next one. Now, it was due to most of her husbands having, you know, underlying medical conditions or alcoholism that she was able to go undetected for such a long time because they were always ruling their deaths to be the cause of something to do with an underlying problem rather than a murder. Now, Nanny Doss would actually pass away from leukemia in 1964 while she was still serving her life sentence in prison for the death of her final husband. So... Yeah, that was the end of Nanny Doss. I'm sure a lot of men out there that frequented the Lonely Hearts column were very glad after her arrest because they could have wound up being her next victim. I mean, I think it seems like Nanny Doss was just gonna keep going until she found the perfect mate, but it seemed like no one was gonna be the perfect mate. It's almost like she scoped people out with problems, so she then had an excuse to kill them you know? But that is the end of another true crime and makeup video, the case of Nanny Doss, the giggling granny, the lonely hearts killer. She has so many nicknames, I, I can't even go through them all. I really hope you enjoyed this video and by enjoyed, I just mean I hope it was interesting and I hope I was able to do this case some justice. If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to subscribe, put the notification bell on so you don't miss when I upload, which is every Wednesday and Sunday at 7.30pm British Standard Time. Down below, you will also find my social media handles, my Instagram, my TikTok, my email address is also listed down there if you want to email any case suggestions or you can leave them in the comments below if you would rather. Any details of the products use my face are also linked down below. They're not affiliate links but they're just links so it's easier. If you want to purchase something you can just click it and go buy it. But I really hope you enjoy. Don't be a bad person, be a good person, stay safe, look after each other, watch out for the grannies because Nanny Doss and Tamara Samsonova have taught us that Grands can be wicked. But until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye.